Hello and welcome everyone to this first uh, video that, of a series of videos that will be devoted to abstract algebra. In this first video we're going to give a brief introduction of the subject as well as give a definition of one of the most important objects that we will be going to study in this uh, video series, that is the group. So let's start first by defining what abstract algebra is. Uh, most people are uh, already familiar with the word algebra. Uh, but let's now actually uh, explain a little bit more in depth what, ab what abstract algebra is and what does it study. So let's start by the word algebra. And the word algebra, uh, in contrast with many other words uh, in, in the scientific field and even mathematics, if we think, and if we think even of a lot of words that we will encounter uh, when studying abstract algebra, such as homomorphism or like isomorphism uh, that come from Greek or words that maybe come from Latin, Algebra is a word that comes from Arabic, in particular from uh, the word which can be transliterated into Latin as algebra in general, which means roughly reuniting um, smaller parts together. And in fact, the essence of the subject from an intuitive and heuristical point of view is exactly this. It is the idea of reuniting things together uh, in bigger objects of the same uh, we would say structure and in fact the central object of study of abstract algebra is that of a algebraic structure and in fact one of the most one of the simplest algebraic structure that we will study is the one of the group uh, that we will introduce briefly and in fact an algebraic structure is a um, is nothing but a set that we can call a and a number of operations that we will define later what an operation is uh, but we all intuitively already understand the notion of operation and and when we study these structures we usually also require that these operations satisf that satisfy some sort of uh, properties in order to give these uh, algebraic structures some excess structure that can make them more interesting because uh, later we will see also we can uh, also study some algebraic structures which have little or no structure uh, other than uh, the, the the closure of the um, that we will later see what closure is of a of a of an operation, other than the closure of operations. But we of course understand that they will not be as interesting to study as algebraic structures uh, that are more complex. And well, let's now start with uh, the definition of a uh, operation, which is I'm gonna give it up here. So let's start by defining a binary operation, which is what we will use. Uh, most of the time, so in an introductory course in abstract algebra, of course, we can also study n array operations. We will define them too, but later. And so, what a binary operation is is that suppose that A is a set, as before, and the binary operation that we can call V for now is a, it's nothing but a function. from the Cartesian product of A with itself to A uh, that assigns a couple of elements, so a couple of elements that we can be called AB in the Cartesian product of A with itself to another element uh, which we will call A star B and, and we also require that this element, so A star B, which we can also call phi of AB is an element of A. This is sometimes called closure, so it's the property of being yes cl uh, closed under this operation. And of course, we can extend this to generally n um, elements getting mapped to another element of the same set. In this case, we call this a n-array operation. And an n-array uh, operation is nothing but a function again that we will call phi that maps uh, the Cartesian product of A n times with itself that we can also def uh, denote as in this way or in this way that maps this set to back to A and again here we implicitly require closure um, inside the definition so we are requiring that the image of a uh, n-tuple of elements of the set gets mapped back to an element um, of the original set so it is on this definition of a binary operation that we define the notion of a group. So, so as we said before, when we consider algebraic structures, uh, especially in the beginning, so when we work 
especially in the beginning when we will work with group theory, we will consider sets together with a binary operation. And we now have the definition of a binary operation. And uh, well, uh, of course, being this an introductory course in object algebra, we will avoid all the details uh, about, well, of course, axiomatic and zero Frankel set theory. So we assume that the uh, whoever is watching the video has a um, more intuitive understanding of sets and, uh, of course, of the um, other, um, we could say, of sets and set theory. And um, what, this is sometimes called in mathematics textbooks uh, naive set theory, and the, it is often the approach that is taken in introductory abstract algebra, topology courses, and whatever. Um, so we have now, we're ready to define what an algebraic structure is. And an algebraic structure is nothing but... So an algebraic structure is a set A together with a collection of operations on A. So this definition is a little bit more general than uh, the, let's say, the algebraic structures that we will work with, especially in the beginning part of the course with groups, because with groups we will work with, um, we will work with uh, a set together with just one binary operation. So this will get all simplified. Of course, there are, for example, n-ary groups, which won't be covered, of course, in the beginning abstract algebra course which are a set A, again, we can also call it A, and uh, together with an n-ary operation this time. Um, so let's, for now, just focus on sets with one binary uh, operation. So uh, having just one set that, uh, so having one set with just one binary operation that just respects the property of closure and thus has no other extra property, uh, as we can all understand, it's not really, um, we could say, um, it would not yield a very interesting structure uh, to study. Um, but uh, this structure actually has a name, and of course, it, ha it has been studied. And uh, the name for this structure is magma. So let's define it here. And a magma is nothing but a magma is a set together with a binary operation. And this binary operation, of course, is just closed. So we have a set A and we have a binary operation uh, phi that takes a couple of elements in a Cartesian product with itself back to A and we can say A star B and nothing else so we will not have any other sort of algebraic property uh, respected by this operation so now whenever we study uh, of course mathematical structures and uh, definitions and so on uh, we always wish to uh, kind of reflect the um, uh, we could say abstract rigorous definitions and uh, theorems and so on with intuition and it is here that well it comes the definition of a group uh, in fact uh, ma many uh, we could say phenomena in the real world and many other things uh, that we intuitively understand and we will later and we will later make a lot of examples to uh, help understand the intuition behind the idea of a group um, actually satisfy some axioms and we call in particular a an algebraic structure with a binary operation that satisfies these axioms a group precisely because uh, it actually um, we could say we actually work it work with it quite often so let's now define a group and a group is nothing but uh, is a set G together with a binary operation that we will denote by, for example, star that assigns to each element, uh, to each couple of elements, a b of um, a Cartesian product with itself, an element of a called a star b, and furthermore. Um, we require that this operation satisfies the following properties. So the first one is associativity. So we require that A star B star C with um, A star B first and then star C is equal to A star B star C for all A, B, C in G. And the second property that we require is 
that of the existence of an identity element. So what is an identity element? Um, it, it is an one element such that every uh, element of the group multiplied with this element yields itself. So we can say this in uh, mathematical language as uh, in the, uh, the following. So for every uh, element, g, a small g of g, um, we have that uh, g star e is equal to e star j that is equal that has to be equal to g so uh, in particular there is such an element in j and this is uh, we will call this element a, the identity element we can denote it by e uh, one and then later we will see some notations that we will adopt it will depend if we will see we will adopt a, a multiplication notation or an addition notation so we will see later how we will call it uh, it's really the same and then uh, the last property that we require is the existence of an inverse element and in particular an inverse element is an element such that um, so we require that for every small g in g there must exist an element g prime in g such that g star g prime um, is equal to g prime star g that has to be equal to the identity that we previously uh, postulated the existence of so these are the three properties of a group if an algebraic structure so a set when a binary operation satisfies these properties then we will call this structure a group so uh, in the following video we will give some examples of a group but before we actually give some examples let's just make a little bit of um, a little historic note so and that is what is this history behind the word group and that is um, so uh, well uh, the, 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 the name group uh, was for the first time used in this context by Galois around uh, the 18, around 1830. But um, the definition that we use uh, today and uh, the connotation that is acquired in uh, modern mathematics was actually given uh, for the first time in 1882 by Heinrich Weibach and Walter von Dick. So this is, uh, let's say, a little bit of history behind the idea, behind the, the name group. So in the next video, we will actually uh, uh, give some examples of groups uh, that will also motivate the definition and a little bit develop the intuition behind the idea. So I thank everyone for the attention and uh, I salute all of you.